So Joe's idea of a COVID friendly trick or treating Halloween was building a candy cannon. Terrible idea. It's like 100 feet. Yeah, it's very dangerous. It's social distancing friendly. It's very social. It's very social distancing they friendly. They don't even have to leave their house. You also could impale small children with candy in their face. It's a terrible idea. I'm going to show you some real ways that you can have a COVID friendly Halloween. Hi guys, welcome back. Look at the salad tongs. I found these at the dollar store. How amazing are these little salad tongs? I'm using these all year round. Hmm. Let's get into the video. I'm not sure if we're trick or treating this year or not. With COVID, everything's crazy. And even if we do, we have to maintain social distancing. It's just going to be different. But I want it to be so magical because it's Saturday night, you guys, and it's a full moon. And I love Halloween, so I don't want to disappoint my kids and I'm amping it up with some dollar store stuff and some quick fun ideas so we can make it the most magical and amazing Halloween yet. If you do have little ones coming to your door trick or treating and you want to maintain social distancing, you can make an adorable candy shoot or a candy slide using PVC piping, either attach it to your rail or make some legs to hold it up so the candy can slide down. I'm decorating our candy slide using everything from the dollar store so it's extra spooky and fun, just wrapping it in gauze so it looks mummified, attaching some dollar store skulls to it. Just have some fun with this. Not only is it going to make your front door and porch look amazing, but you're also going to have social distancing and it's fun to get your candy through a slide. So when kids come up, have them put their bag underneath the front and slide their candy in. It's just a cute way of still doing trick or treating and making it safe. My next quick tip also involves the dollar store. This is something we do every year. It's a spooky Halloween themed dinner. We turn off all the lights. We decorate everything using the dollar store with skulls and a tablecloth. And I drape some gauze over the lights. So when the lights are turned off, it really is so spooky. We play some Halloween music. The kids remember this every year. I have done things like putting eyeballs in plastic severed fingers in chili and soup. That is overkill. My kids are horrified and it never ends well. You don't want to make your food too gross, but just reusing the same dollar store things every year, turning off the lights, lighting some candle and some spooky Halloween music really does make a dinner party that they will never forget. Another fun tradition that we do every year is we ghost our neighbors. So there's a group of us here in the community that we make little packages for our kids. We knock on the door, we leave the gift and we run. So every year we ghost the neighbors. It's just especially now, it's such a great way of sharing some kindness with strangers or for people in your community that you know, you fill a dollar store bucket or a bag with some little gifts, some candy, some little trick or treat treasures for the kids in your neighborhood, knock on the door or have your kids knock on the door and run away so you can ghost your neighbors. I think this is such a sweet tradition that we all do here in the community. And this year more than ever, it's a great way to spread some Halloween joy. Does Halloween have joy? Halloween has joy. It has joy and let's spread it. This one is probably my absolute favorite, especially if you're deciding not to go trick or treating. It is a haunted Halloween hunt. What you do is you get glow sticks from the dollar store, you break them so they're glowing, you hide them all over a room in your home with little bits of candy, and then you shut the lights off so the kids can hunt for the candy in the dark. We always watch Charlie Brown's The Great Pumpkin. We tell the kids the great pumpkin is coming and he's hiding candy. It's basically just Easter with the Easter Bunny, but you're riffing on it for Halloween, but it's glow in the dark, so it's extra fun. So after your spooky themed dinner, you can have a haunted Halloween hunt right inside your house. So memorable, so fun, and the kids still get a ton of candy without having to trick or treat. A movie marathon is a must on Halloween, whether the night before or even the night after or the night of, especially if you're not going out trick or treating. Here's a list of my all time favorite family friendly Halloween movies. Hocus Pocus, it's the best, great for all ages. We can watch it every year and never get sick of it. You have to watch that one. The Nightmare Before Christmas, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Casper, oh Casper. Who had a crush on Devin Sawa when they were a kid? Just me, just me. Halloween Town, it's the worst and also the best. My kids love Halloween Town, even Izzy. 
She wouldn't admit it, but I know she loves it. Goosebumps, one and two, and the, the house with the clock in the walls. Is that what it's called? The clock in the walls and monster house. They're all a little spooky, but still very family friendly. So whatever Halloween movies you decide to watch, a movie marathon is totally a must. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite Halloween movie of all time is. Mine is probably Hocus Pocus. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're feeling inspired to add some new Halloween traditions for your kids this year or yourself if you're single. This is the coolest time of year, let's be honest, and we're not gonna let social distancing or isolation or quarantine time ruin this. Let's make it amazing. I'll see you guys next time. You guys say fire in the hole. You say fire in the hole. Fire! Ready? Fire in the hole! Okay, can we be done? Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Every year we do like a spooky themed dinner. We do lots of themed dinner parties where we dress up in costumes. I'm a nerd. Let's just, I'm a theater geek that's just never grown up and just does this. But anyways, one that stands out in particular where I invited my parents over and we tried to make it extra spooky. So I got fake blood for like, I made these finger biscuits with, with little almond fingernails. They look like witch's fingers and I covered them in fake blood. And then I put eyeballs and severed fingers, plastic ones, in the chili. We had chili and toast. I covered the table with fake um, cobwebs from the dollar store. The problem was, when my dad went to take a bite of his chili, the, the cobwebs had stuck to his shirt, which also stuck to the toast. So he was levitating the toast with his arms and he was like, spooky toast. Needless to say, no one ate the toast. No one ate the chili. We had candy for dinner. It was epically horrible. Don't make your food too gross. You know when you put that, that's that cat litter thing you've seen on Pinterest, it looks like cat litter, dirty cat litter, but it's a dessert. Don't make that. No one wants to eat that. You can still have a spooky dinner party without being super gross and making people hurl. We also, oh, I made costumes for everyone, but it was like a torrential downpour, hurricane gale winds. And immediately when we stepped outside, my dad's costume blew off down the road. He had like this little board and, and hat. My stepmom's, and we got soaked and it was in, all everything got ruined. It was the best Halloween ever. Honestly, when I think back to all of them, it went so epically bad that it was hilarious and amazing and memorable. And that's what this is all about. It's not about being perfect. It's about making really cool memories with your kids making them eat eyeballs and no, no, not that, but, but you know, doing something a little different. So when they grow up and look back in their childhood, they're like, my mom was a whack job and I want to be a whack job too. Cause that's what parenting is all about. So have a happy Halloween, you guys, and make it memorable this year.